first question the text said that raising a number to an odd power was a monotonic transformation what about raising a number to an even power is this a monotonic transformation hint consider the case when f u is equal to u square so definitely this is a monotonic transformation when u is positive so u positive it's perfect but whenever u is negative this is not the case and obviously trivially speaking u equal to 0 does not make sense because in that case you are not changing the number by any way so for even power it's not monotonic for negative numbers it's monotonic for positive numbers next question you have been given eight transformations which of them are monotonic in nature so let's look at the first one first one is a straight line with a positive slope to definitely it's monotonic in nature so first is right second it's a square and a negative and we already know that squaring does not give you monotonic transformation for negative numbers so if there's a negative sign and a square none of them helps this u so this is not third this is again squaring right so whenever you are squaring you are not having a monotonic transformation what about four four is ln Obviously, v has to be positive for this to be defined. But if v is positive, ln is increasing in nature. So u is a monotonic transformation. What about 5? 5, let me write it more clearly. This is minus e to the power minus v. So this will look something like this. If this is your e to the power v, this will be e to the power minus v. And this will be your minus of e to the power minus v so in this case this is increasing hence this is increasing so this is monotonic transformation six is your even power because this is v square and we know this is not monotonic seven is again your even power and for positive number so for positive numbers it's monotonic so that's perfectly fine eight eight is even power for negative number no no not possible next question we claimed in the text that if preferences were monotonic, then a diagonal line through the origin would intersect each indifference curve exactly once. Can you prove this rigorously? Hint, what would happen if it intersected some indifference curve twice? So let's draw an indifference curve. And let's suppose it's going to intersect twice. So this is point one, this is point two. The moment this happens, one of the point can be thought of as x1, x2, and the other point will be to the right and to the top. So that will be x1 plus delta x1 and x2 plus delta x2. So this point will have more of both the goods. And as preferences are monotonic, so more is better. In that case, this will be preferred. So this cannot be on the same indifference curve. Hence, proved. Next question. What kind of preferences are represented by utility function of the form of u? And what about v? So u is this guy and v is this guy. u can be simplified to x1 plus x2 to the power half. And V can be simplified to 13 into X1 plus X2. So both of them are monotonic transformation of X1 plus X2, which is the case of perfect substitutes. Next question. What kind of preferences are represented by a utility function of the form of U? Is the utility function V a monotonic transformation of U? So this is a simple case of quasi-linear preferences. And this can be thought of as X1 plus root of X2 to the power whole square because this will be your a square this will be your b square this is 2ab and this can be written as u square and we know that x1 and x2 are non-negative so in that case you can say that this is a monotonic transformation next question so over here you have a utility function u v and w so what does u represent this can be thought of as x1 to the power half x2 to the power half so this is cobb douglas and is the function v a monotonic transformation of u? Definitely not because the powers over here are different and over here the powers are same. What about w? Over here the powers are same which means these two guys u and w are monotonic transformations of each other. Next question. Can you explain why taking a monotonic transformation of a utility function does not change the marginal rate of substitution? So you can start thinking of it in this way that MRS is going to be minus MU1 by MU2 and you can also label it as slope 
and both of these two things represent the trade off and trade off is represented by preferences and you are not changing the preference you're changing the utility function to be more specific it's a monotonic transformation so preferences are intact trade off is intact so mrs does not change end of chapter 4